Well, welcome everybody. My name is David LaMotta. I am a technical marketing engineer at NetApp. And the intent of this talk is really to bring some awareness of the things that cluster data on tap can do and the integration that we have with CloudStack in the form of a plugin. And what we're going to be doing in this session, I know it's very, it's very tight. You know, 30 minutes is a short time, so I'm going to you know, try to <clears throat> go through this as fast as I can with, you know, without hitting the important pieces. We're going to do a live demo during this session, so wish me luck. Live demos are always fun, right? So first and foremost, you know, cluster data on tap, you know, goodness for the cloud. Who here runs NetApp on the back end for your storage? And are you guys running cluster mode or seven mode? You don't know. Oh, you know it's running. That's good. So cluster data on tap is, you know, the, 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 newest, the newer generation of the operating system that runs on our, on our storage arrays. And I want to focus on a, on a key pieces of functionality that cluster data on tap brings to the table. Non-disruptive operations. We've heard in previous talks, Mike, Seth, where everybody's talking about scale out. Cluster data on tap allows you that same type of scale out. You can add more controllers, more disks, spinning disks, SSDs. The flavor is up to you what, to, what you want to choose for your controller, uh, for, your contro for your cluster controllers. So the non-disruptive operations include you can upgrade the firmware on your disks, you can change the shelves, you can up, upgrade the operating system, everything without taking a hit on your operations. Load balancing is also part of this um, model of clustering in your controllers. And one thing that's very important that I always like to bring in, it, it meshes extremely well with the way CloudStack and you know, the cloud model works, is the concept of multi-tenancy. Cluster data on tap has the concept of a storage virtual machine. So while you may have a physical box that has the disks and aggregates behind it, there's this construct of a storage virtual machine that's an encapsulation of security, network connectivity, and volumes. And you can apply a storage virtual machine to an independent tenant. So in the, in the model of CloudStack, we can use, let's say, you have Pepsi, you have Coke, you don't want them to see their data. You can create an SVM for Pepsi, an SVM for Coke, sharing on the same storage array, same, same physical box, but their data will be kept separate from one another and they will never be able to see the data from one SVM to another. The next slide talks about the storage efficiency um, functionality that cluster data on tap has. You know, we've talked about RayDP. There's no need to go a lot of this. I do want to point out FlexCone technology and snapshots, which our plugin leverages heavily. So Flex clone technology, as you can see, zero, you know, very, very fast copies. There, we're doing reference at the block level underneath it, so a copy is extremely fast. And snapshots, you know, snapshots are point in time images of your NFS volumes, and they happen very, very fast as well. If you want data protection, you know, cluster data on tap, and NetApp has snap vault technologies, snap mirroring, you can offload your, your data to a safe, you know, off-site location where you can keep it safe. So there's, there's different, different mechanisms to keep your, your data safeguarded. So if we take all these concepts, the multi-tenancy, the scale-out, flex clones, snapshots, you know, how are we applying that or how are we leveraging or how are we eating our own dog food, basically? So we have a long history of products inside of NetApp called virtual storage consoles. I've, I happen to work on the VSC for VMware as well as the VSC for Zen Server. And these tools are plugins into the hypervisor's craft management tools. Zen Center, we have a plugin for vSphere. And basically, they're orchestration tools. They allow you to operate on the storage and connect the dots behind and, to, and hook it into the hypervisors. So what we've been trying to achieve with CloudStack is basically bring the same orchestration model to CloudStack. And the similarities are, are at, at, at its core, as you will see in a few minutes. So a few terms that I always like to get out of the way, because it can be confusing if, if you're not um, too well versed with NetApp and, <clears throat> and how we call things. So our, a volume for us is really an NFS volume, not to be confused with CloudStack, where a volume is really a VM disk or a data disk. Snapshots, again, I also mentioned that just a minute ago. Snapshots for us are volume level snapshots. Very, very fast, 
the point in time copies basically of your data on, on the volume. CloudStack uses the word snapshot to refer to a VM backup. Primary and secondary, kind of mentioned a little while ago in terms of snap mirroring and snap vault. Primary and secondary don't need to explain to you guys, you know, where the ISOs are kept, VMs are kept, et cetera, et cetera. Last but not least, a cluster. You know, we talked about scaling out collections of physical boxes making, comprising a, a NetApp cluster. And in CloudStack, a cluster, of course, is a collection of same type hypervisors. So given the orchestration bits that we want to bring, I mean, what, what is it that we have? So the plug and the VSC for Apache CloudStack has backup and recovery of uh, virtual machines residing on VMware. And we have backup and recovery of the MySQL database so long as it resides on a NetApp volume. Now, <coughs> Mike, in a previous talk, uh, brought you know, great points about backing up your database. I'm back backing up your virtual machines, I'm sorry. And we give you two layers of backups. We can have the I don't care, no quiescing type backup of your VM. We can have also quiesced virtual machines, and we do backups of those. The last piece is application consistency. That's not in this plugin, but as Mike alluded earlier, you, know, you, can, rely on, you can rely on a third party tool to achieve that, that type of consistency. Version one of the plugin supports NFS only, and storage provisioning, we can do it of primary storage, and we can do it of secondary storage as well, directly from the CloudStack user interface. And alongside with the provisioning operation, of course, you get other perks. You can resize it, you can destroy it, you can apply deduplication on directly from the CloudStack user interface. Storage analytics, very, it's very helpful for the cloud administrator to see how much you're consuming from your aggregate, how much you're consuming from your volume, and if you have technologies such as deduplication enabled on your volume, we're going to be able to see how much you're saving on that volume, all from the CloudStack user interface. And, you know, I, I don't need to read it and don't need to stress how important it is to have everything available through an API. So our plugin is, makes full use of a REST API as well. So if you guys want to automate provisioning storage or operating on, on NetApp hardware through the REST API from CloudStack, you can do so as well. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you a blip of what those APIs looks like towards the, the live demo. So that little first, first blurb is a little bit of a, you know, singing kumbaya to ourselves, you know. It's, we're kind of the first guys that have three level, three layers of plugins all comprised into one. And you'll see it in, in the screens uh, in the upcoming slides. And basically what we've done is we have an extension to the user interface, an extension to the API, and then an, an implementation of the storage subsystem API, which gives you that, that nice vendor agnostic layer for operating on the storage. In terms of versions that we support for cluster data on tap, we, uh, starting with 8.2 is the first release, and you know we support 8.2.1, which just GA'd a few weeks ago. And what you get with you know, this plugin is go to the NetApp support site, download an RPM, install it on your management server, tweak one file, reboot the server, and the plugin is ready, ready to go and to cons be consumed. It's a no-charge product, so we, you, don't, you won't have to pay anything for this. So one of the, you know, the things that I like to stress is we make it, it seems simple to use it, and it's gonna, it, it blends very well with the user interface for CloudStack, but there's a lot of plumbing that's going underneath the covers. So we apply best practices when we're generating provisioning volumes, resizing. There's lots of checks to make sure that you're not going to corrupt your data by shrinking your volume to you know, over, overriding data. And you know, the first version that we support for Apache CloudStack and, and Citrix Cloud Platform is 4.3. Now, in terms of what's coming in the future, these are some of the things that that I would like to see you know, as part of our roadmap, Cluster Data on Tap has a support for a multitude of protocols. So having iSCSI or Fiber Channel is something that we can, we can work in the future. All the other VSCs have their bread and butter, their strength really has started with uh, doing cloning of the virtual machines. Cloning relies on the flex clone technology that I was relaying earlier. You know, we do super fast copies at the block level of the VMs and as a matter of fact, our backup and recovery strategy uses that same technology on VMware. 
backup and recovery for Zen server, that's you know something that I would really, really like to see. It's it's a feature that's lacking, but we know that you know, we want to put it in there. So after you know giving everything, you know, a little bit of cluster data on tap, I mean these talks can last an hour on their own, but you know, just kind of condensed view of what cluster data on tap can do for your cloud and what the plugin does and what it looks like. You know, I'll switch over to an environment here that I have. All right, so this is, let me go here. This is a Cloud Platform 4.3 installation. And you would, we're not gonna go over the installation steps to, you know, to get the, the RPM installed or anything. But after you reboot your management server, this is what you would see. You know, the virtual storage console for Apache Cloud Stack. And, sorry about that, let me just refresh this guy. So this is an area where we allow you to enter information about your storage array, your controllers. Because we do low-level communication, obviously, to provision the volumes, resize them, and do et cetera. So this is an area where you can add your controller. And I'll just go ahead and remove this guy. Basic information about the controllers. And this is the screen. If you have those storage virtual machines that I alluded to earlier, the, as a cloud administrator, you know, we're trying to empower that person to be able to manage the storage without necessarily having to go over to the storage administrator. So here you could add directly SVMs, SVM1 for Coke, SVM2 for Pepsi, and then <clears throat> via storage tagging, you could assign you know, the compute offerings and the disk offerings for Coke, can go to one SVM via the storage tags, and for Pepsi via stor storage tags to the other SVM. Uh, let's see, so this is adding a controller. Now to add primary storage, it's very simple. The, the top piece is very cloud stack specific, but from this point forward is where you'd, you're picking you know, what controller you want it to go, what SVM you want it to go, Aggregate, data lift gives us the entry point from a networking perspective. Export policy is, you know, your access, the way you can access that, that NFS share. We'll give this, say, 100 gigs, and we'll thin provision it so we don't take up too much space. 5% for snapshot reserves. We're gonna dedupe it out the gate. And there's a nice feature that's called auto grow. And basically what that allows you to do is if you're reaching that the 100 gig limit, AutoGrow enables you to say, you know what, I really want to grow by 50 gigs, by 50 gigs, and you know, I don't want this to be more than 200 gigs big. So basically this will AutoGrow twice up until 200. So it's really, it's really nice and flexible in the sense that your storage can you know, grow as, as demand is placed on it. Let's do, enables VSC snapshotting. We want to give you, the users, the ability to either bypass our snapshot strategy to not get vendor lock-in for the, for the snapshots because it's absolutely true that once you're you know, down a path for your VM backups, you're kind of, I mean, you're stuck with that. It's very, there's a lot of vendor lock-in, no other way to put it. So if, if you want to skip it and you don't want to use our, our snapshot strategy, you're more than welcome not to check, check this box. But we're gonna do this today and we're just gonna call this NetApp on VMware. So right now what's happening is, of course, we're provisioning storage on the back end. We're tying it as, in as primary storage to CloudStack. And if we switch out to just another tool called uh, on-command system manager, you know, we'll be able to see there's our CCNA 14 volume. It's 95 gigs big because we said we're gonna use 5% for snapshots. Now, one of the things that has also been mentioned today is the notion of QoS, right? You can, you can limit um, the max capacity of IOPS that a certain VM can have. And we don't necessarily take advantage of that feature directly from CloudStack, but you can apply QoS on your volume, on your NetApp volume 
directly from System Manager. Post provisioning, you know, post everything, oblivious to your users. You can come here and say, you know, I'm going to create my uh, policy group. I'm going to say it's 1,000 IOPS. And what this does is every VM that you've provisioned on that CCNA primary storage are going to get that level of IOPS. You want to change it later, you can come in here and you can modify it, and you get your quality of service at this, at this level. Now, you can do, if you want finer granularity, you can go and do QoS at the VM level, at the, at the specific file level in your volume. So there's really three levels of QoS, at the file level, at the volume level, or if you want to apply it at the SVM level, so that it's you know, all encompassing to all the volumes that belong to that SVM, you can do so as well. So let me go back here to the infrastructure, primary storage. There's our, there's our volume. And if we go back to the plugin, I, I want to show you the, the storage analytics that I was telling you guys before. So if we go into the cluster, I, I used the overall cluster credentials so I can see all my SVMs that are running in here. But if I drill down into a particular SVM, I can see the aggregates that it has used access to how much we're consuming on, on those aggregates, and then the volumes for that particular SVM. If you have deduplication enabled, it's going to show you how much you're saving. So how much you're really using, and then how much you're saving by having deduplication enabled. <coughs> Excuse me. Secondary storage, we're not going to go over that. There's no need, but the, the, the premise is exactly the same. You know, you pick your data here some NetApp specific information in the bottom, click provision and the volume is gonna get created. Now in terms of backing up your MySQL database, this is a, a fairly, fairly nice feature that I, that I like because it allows you to you know, have, a, have a snapshot of your infrastructure basically. If your MySQL database goes up in flames, you're in trouble. So if you put it on a NetApp volume, what we're gonna do is by clicking that backup database, we quiesced MySQL, we took a volume level snapshot, and we unquiesced it. Now if you have data protection mechanisms enabled on that volume, snap mirror or snap vault, now you can have your, your MySQL database backed up to an offsite location. Pardon me? Yeah, that's the cloud stack MySQL database, yes. Now I have a small VM um, deployed somewhere else. I know this is a, can be a little bit of a time-consuming operation, but I want to show you what, what I meant by the backup and recovery piece. So I have a, it's a very, very tiny uh, Linux image, and this has been provisioned on a VMware volume, on a, you know, VMware hypervisor on NetApp storage. And once you click the take a snapshot button, what we're doing here is we're not going to quiesce it so you guys can see how, how fast this is. So right now what we're doing is we're going down to the disk. We're doing the sysclones of all the VM files that encompass that virtual machine. And we also, as part of the operation, of course, we need to keep track of paths and references and everything makes it into the, the, the cloud stack database. So at this point, I mean, you have a backup between quotes of this VM. Is it crash consistent? No. Are the applications inside of it you know, consistent? Absolutely not. But there are customers who don't care about crash consistency. They just want to back them up. So this, ser this serves a, one, a very unique use case for customers that don't care about you know, crash consistency. They just want to back them up. Now, if you do a quiesced backup, what we do here is we'll go to the hypervisor. We'll ask it to create a temporary copy so that our base is crash consistent. We'll do the same level of uh, syscloning on the back end, and when that is done, we'll tell the hypervisor, you know what, get rid of this copy, so all writes that went in here are coalesced back to the original image. So at this point, we have VM crash consistency. Again, application consistency is not there, but it's just one step above you know, the bare bones, no, con no crash consistency at all. From a hypervisor point of view, it's great. The reason being, you know, we don't, we don't start to accumulate linked clones. So everything from the hypervisor's perspective is one VM, and that's it. All the references for the block are taken care of by ourselves, and 
the hypervisor doesn't know that it has a chain at all. Last but not least, you know, everything that, there are some settings in here that I think is worth mentioning for the sake of it. You know, if you want to have default values, you can modify them in here and, you know, kick, kick the management server and they'll be persisted. Now, in terms of the APIs that I was alluding to before, if you do the list APIs command on your, on your management server, you know, just look for NTAP. And all of the commands that we're doing, all the operations are listed here, and you can access them through the REST API. So it's extremely flexible if you want to schedule your backups, and, you know, add more storage, resize it, et cetera, et cetera. You can do it from this, from this uh, REST API. So in a nutshell, that, that's what the plugin looks like. It provides the functionality that I just described. So let me switch back to my presentation because I have just a few more slides about something that I do want to bring up. We also work on reference architectures for our customers. So who here is familiar with FlexPod? All right, that's awesome. So there is a, a fairly recent CVD, a Cisco, validate, Cisco validated design that we worked alongside with Citrix and Cisco to have Cloud Platform 4.2.1 deployed on FlexPod running cluster data on tap 8.2. It's a 400 and odd, odd uh, pages uh, of a beast of a document, but it gives you extremely detailed information on how to stand Cloud Platform on FlexPod. You know, some of the things that we did, you know, just highlighting the software that we used, failover testing, or highlighting a lot of the multi-tenancy aspects of it that I mentioned before with the storage of virtual machines. So, you know, f the ultimate goal for us is you know, we want to be the storage of choice for your cloud stack or cloud platform develop, deployment. I mean, there's, I don't, I don't, I, I don't say any vendor could fault, it, you know, fault himself or herself for wanting that. I mean, that's our positioning, just like everybody else's is. And you know, in doing so, we, I mean, we try to bring these plugins, the reference architectures, you know, conferences, attending and presenting, so that you can see the value of having cluster data on tap on your on your on your cloud environment. So, with that said, you know. Got a few minutes for questions. I mean, I'll be happy to take any. Yes. So, uh, so with the cloud stack integration, do you store the VM of disk as a as a file on NSX? Yes. So they're they're Sys clones. They are the Flex clones that we're using the Flex clone technology, but they appear to be files on disk on primary storage. No, no, so the question is, do we have to snapshot the entire volume? And we deliberately did not want to do that because, you know, let's say that you have a 10 terabyte, you know, primary storage that's shared amongst multiple tenants. If we started snapshotting the volume as a whole, you know, I start backing up your VMs and his VMs and her VMs, and maybe that's not what they want. You know, and there's also a limitation on the number of snapshots that you can have at the volume level. So we wanted to avoid hitting that limitation, and we, were, you know, instead we opted for doing sysclones of the VM files and kept on disk. Okay. Now I have to do, I have to say though, the volume level snapshots may still take place. There's nothing that prevents you from having a snapshot policy that takes regular snapshots of that volume, and if you have data protection on them, you can get snap mirror snap vault on those volumes as well. Yes. So the question is, do we have iSCSI and fiber channel support? Version one has NFS only, and version two, dot next, or however we want to put it, I mean, we, we can put iSCSI and fiber channel and it's just a matter of, of doing it. But no, NFS for version one currently. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we report what we report the apparent value that's consumed. So CloudStack, if we say you know you're 50 gigs used, we're going to tell CloudStack it's 50 gigs used. So from a storage administrator's perspective, that's where the I don't want to say some can see as a benefit, some others as a detriment. But from the storage perspective, you really you really know that you're saving a lot. And if you're if you're charging your customers per storage you can charge them by 
Mr. Customer, you're using 100 gigs. But in reality, you know, you have OS images that are replicated along, you know, amongst all VMs, and you're really consuming just five gigs. Who knows? So you can, the benefit is for, this, for the person that owns the storage, not so much for the, for the end consumer. Any other question? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the question is leveraging the stuff that Mike put in some time ago for the QoS in there. And can we leverage it or are we planning on leveraging it? Short answer, maybe. I mean, there's absolutely no reason why we couldn't, right? When, you know, when, when this product was being worked on, decision was made not to, knowing that we could do QoS outside of CloudSec and still achieve the same effect. Anything else? I have some um, material you know, references in here. There's a link to the, to the Flexbot CVD. You can hit me up via email or Twitter. I'll be happy to, to, to connect with you. And once the slides are made available, there's a bunch of screenshots in here if you want to you know, reference them or use them for whatever purposes. All right. That's it. Thank you very much.